agency. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You get a two for one special deal today. And I heard a little bird told me before we started recording, this is the first time these two guys have ever been guests at the same time. Now, you can hear them as co-hosts of their own podcast whenever you like. Just head on over to the Scratch Agency podcast on all the major platforms. And yeah, I just tip my hand a little bit because I have the privilege of talking with Stephen Turnbull and Sean Fitzgerald. Welcome, guys. Thank you, James. Thank Looking you. Looking forward to this. Thanks for having us. Whew. I, I am so bummed that we rescheduled the last one because I was very much looking forward to it. Silly me, never included Sean, and I got to have both of you guys here. I can't have one because, I mean, it's a much more interesting conversation with both sides of the monster that is the Scratch Agency podcast. So I'm just going to flip a coin here. Uh, actually, no, we'll just do a little pick a number game. Pick a number between one and ten, both of you, please. Nine. Eight. Oh, there you go. I was I was seeing if you were going to take the bait he gave. The number is seven. Sean, you get to go <laughs> first, man. I, I'd love to hear some from Sean's story. Literally anything you want to tell us about your bio, your background. You can talk industry stuff. You can talk family, hobbies, interest. Cool. What's the Sean story? Yeah, man. I'll keep it short and sweet. The Sean story is, um, let's start. I'm going into college, right? I hate it. It's not for me. I decide to join the military. I have a buddy who's in the military. He tells me about all the benefits. So I get into the military and use that as my stepping stone because my thought process at the time was college. If I don't do that, I got to do something else of, of importance. I mean, I've always kind of gravitated towards um, an industry that helps other people. Like I, I thought about being a cop. I thought about being a nurse. Thought about I got eventually got into insurance and military was another way of me to quote unquote help other people. Um, yeah. So I did the military thing. Um, I was in the National Guard, so I was able to have a full time job as well. So I met somebody who just had a lot of money and he invited me over to his house and I got to his house. He had a freaking nice fancy boat docked in his backyard he lived on a canal he had a mercedes and another nice car in the driveway he had a big swimming pool and i was just like what do you do for a living and he tells me uh you know i do insurance and my, i'm 21 my initial reaction is kind of like oh that's doesn't sound like too boring much. yeah it doesn't sound like too much fun yeah. but i'm <laughs> i'm still kind of intrigued i'm curious so i'm just asking yeah. him a lot of questions about it and he tell, you know he does contractors and all this stuff so I just asked him straight up. I said, man, this sounds interesting. Are you hiring? And he thought, oh, you got to get your license and then call me back whenever, you know. So I went home. I remember I Googled how to get PNC license in New York, got my license, called him back, whatever it was, like a month or two later because I did the course uh, in person. And uh, I was like, hey, man, you still hiring? Because uh, I got the license. And I ended up working for him for almost 10 years. And then in 2020, a couple of weeks before the pandemic, I opened up my own agency. And we are a PNC agency. We're actually about 50-50 commercial and personal. Mm -hmm. I My business plan was to be more commercial uh, when we started, uh, but COVID kind of changed. I, I just found a big influx of personal once the, the COVID situation happened here in New York. It was like a ghost town here. Yep. So um, I winded up picking up heavy on personal, and then commercial started to drip in more and more. Um, and now we have five other people and rocking and rolling. Man, now that you are an agency principal, how great is it when an eager young person comes up to you and says, are you hiring for a sales role? It's like, oh, oh, yeah. oh yes, I am. I know, I gotta, I'm always hiring gotta, for a sales role. I got to hold Come back on. the excitement, you know? Oh, man. It's like, <laughs> when can you start? Yeah, right. <laughs> no, I mean, such a cool story, man. I love the the initiative of, hey, I like that. I'm going to ask some questions and then I'm just going to jump in and do it. Ten, I mean, 10 years, it speaks to your loyalty. It speaks to the way that you operate. You're not a job jumper. You know, you're not chasing a paycheck. You're doing something that you like, probably with people that you enjoy their company and, and want to be on mission with them. I can't imagine you would have stuck it out for 10 years if you didn't enjoy what you were doing. Mm -hmm. no, I appreciate that. Awesome. Uh, I'm going to turn, turn the coin over here, man. The other half of the, of the dynamic duo, Mr. <laughs> Stephen Turnbull, upstate New York. Where are you at about? So we are upstate, and uh, Sean refers to it as upstate. We are really central New York. Sean didn't know that there was anything such as central New York before <laughs> he met me. A little inside baseball there. Yeah. Sean is in Long Island. We are about five and a half hours away from each other. 
Um, but uh, all the people from the city in New York just in Long Island just forget about us up here. But there's a lot of us up here still in upstate. But uh, yeah, my story is definitely not as cool as Sean's. But um, I'm uh, was born and raised raised in this area, and uh, kind of unlike most of us that, that talk about falling into insurance, I was raised in insurance. So. Uh, my family has an agency here in town, actually, um, and uh, fifth generation agent uh, worked, uh, you know, always knew that was the plan. When I was sick from school, always went to dad's office, you know, when uh, it was uh, holidays or whatever, went to dad's office, sat in the break room on the Game Boy until work was done. And like just being around that environment, seeing, you know, the hustle of my dad and, and kind of the flexibility, you know, he never missed one of my hockey games, all those stories you hear. It was something I wanted to do. And uh, joined the agency, went to college, all that. Joined the agency two days after college graduation in 2016. Uh, so I've been just about eight years now in the industry. And after about six and a half years in the family family business, I left and, and started my own T5 insurance. We started in May of 22. So we're coming up on two years, which is crazy. And family business is hard, man. We can do a whole episode on that. And I've done episodes on that. So I don't want to beat that drum. But family oh, yeah. business is, is very difficult. And, um, you know, I said, hey, it was three months before my wedding. Uh, my wife was completely on board and I said, if there's, we don't have any kids, if there's ever a time, let's do it. Let's bet on ourselves. And we did that mm. two years ago and it's been incredible. I have a, I have a guess what the T5 is, uh, but uh, I'd love to hear the inspiration there. And then I'll tell you after what my guess is and how wrong or right I am. Yeah. So it's a Turnbull fifth generation agent. Yes, I was so right. Got it. Okay. <laughs> I, know, I yeah. thought there was a good possibility there, but you, know, you never know. You know. You're a creative guy. There's no telling what you could have. Right, Maybe it's exactly. like five value statements that all start with the letter T. <laughs> we're we're thoughtful and timely and whatever. So, yeah, no, exactly. but yeah, it's Turnbull fifth generation T five insurance. I love it, man. Now the uh, the cool thing here is you guys have very different styles. Uh, you're two guys that ended up together, and we're going to talk about the podcast. I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask uh, the, all the podcasty questions of, you know, how in the world do these two co-hosts come together? Aside from being two good old uh, New York boys, um, you got so, uh, Long Island's about as New York as it gets, man. Like that's like the New York of New York. So the um, let me see here. Sorry, my I should turn on Do Not Disturb when I'm recording. I thought I did. My bad. <laughs> You're wondering why my eyes went over there to the side and you heard the little tick, tick, tick sound. Yeah, that's because I'm not on Do Not Disturb. Hold on just a second. Slack, you're killing me. Yeah, the editors are going to love this. It's like, James, what are you doing? Why are you not? <laughs> okay, I'm just exiting entirely. So you guys have very different styles. Steven, I'm, I'm going to start with you here because I see all your posts. You're, I mean, I, I follow closely what both you guys are doing. I, I see both of you as as definitely big names in the emerging stars category, if you will. Like... You know the the like the Oscars, it, whatever that that category is, it was like names that are definitely on an ascendancy or whatever. Like both of you guys are definitely in that category. Um, and but some of the stuff that I see from you, Steve, and a lot of it is all this community involvement. Like you're wearing black tie, going to charity fundraisers, and you're you're you know doing stuff in your local community. It seems like every week. Uh, so I'd love to hear just just one question for each of you. And then we'll see where the conversation takes us. What is your superpower? What is the thing that you feel like at T5 and you as the leader, you are just better at than everybody else? Um, I feel I feel a strength of mine is connections and being a connector for people, being a resource for people. And, and, and um, I enjoy that. That really gets me ticking. Whether it's somebody asking, hey, do you know a plumber or do you know a lawyer or do you know X or whatever, just being able to help other people, uh, the old B&I giver's gain motto, I just I like I fuel off that. And I feel like I, um, that's probably a strength of mine. It makes me feel a little uncomfortable to, to, to sit here and talk about things that I feel I'm good at. But I feel like the being the connector of people is kind of always the goal. And if, you know, I can just help people with whatever that might be if it's sally looking to get a plumber or someone starting a business and they need an attorney an insurance person a bank or whatever um i think that I'm, I'm pretty good at helping make those connections and uh you know keeping and striving those relationships 
I see you there, Zig Ziglar. All right. Good stuff, yeah, man. Exactly. And, and hey, you are the guest on a podcast. You're supposed to toot your horn. You're supposed to be a little bit braggy, a little bit cocky. It's, it's what happens when you're on that side of the microphone, my friend. Because uh, you did it to me, and I'm just doing it right back. <laughs> Can you believe it was two years ago? Like, yeah, that that is nuts. It is absolutely nuts. I was like, how, how? Like, what? It's almost two. It's it's almost exactly two years ago. It was the summer of, of 22, wasn't it? That you guys interviewed yeah. me. You were real early on when we started, so I think it was, might have been late two summer of 22 years already. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, I mean, not not exactly, but almost. Yeah. I'm rounding up a little bit here, dude. I. We're dropping episode 150 of the podcast this week, this Friday, and May 7th. Um, I don't know when this episode will drop. I think it's after May 7th for sure. Um, but that's our third anniversary as a podcast. That's awesome, um, man. It's Congrats. Been, it's not easy wild to get there. To think that, no, it's not. And it's, yeah, I imagine you guys will probably get there. It looks like you're having a bunch of fun. Um, I, I warn you, when you get up in the 60, 70, 80, 90 episodes and you run out of all of your really killer guests, and it's like, oh, I want to have so-and-so on, then it starts being a little bit more difficult. Mm. Uh, but you didn't ask me for advice, and so I'm not going to give unsolicited <laughs> advice when you're the guest on the podcast here. So, um, man, um, Sean, you said when I asked you what your superpower is that you are able to work Internet leads at a really high level. Uh, can you talk about that? Like, how, how did you decide that leads were going to be a thing and – Knowing you from what I've seen, you must have built a whole system around we're going to be really good at internet leads. Yeah. So just to give a little backstory on it, at my previous agency, it was a nationwide agency, and they used to basically reimburse us for leads, for purchased leads. So I took that opportunity and honestly just trial, money. trial and error and figured it out along the way. Uh, so when I opened up the new agency and COVID happened and personal lines starting to pick up and just being honest, I looked at kind of what direct appointments I had and I said, well, I have a few direct personal carriers that pay 15%, have profit sharing, that are easy to write with, that are regionals, that other people might not have. Why don't I go a little heavier into personal, you know? So then I started looking at leads, right? And I looked, there's... For those of you that purchase leads or that have looked to purchase leads, there's a bunch of different vendors. You have Smart Financial, Quote Wizard, Hometown Quotes. There's a whole bunch of different ones out there. I don't think my formula is perfect for everyone. So let me just start off and say that because what works for me might not work for Steven, might not work for James because we know how yeah. the Texas uh, property market is down there. Um, that wasn't a cheap shot. Booty. Sorry, it, <laughs> it, no, there's no, I'll have a cheap shot right along with you. It's booty. Yeah. It's awful. Yeah. Just, ugh. Yeah. It's not too great yeah. on Long Island either. We only have a couple of uh, direct personal lines carriers left. So um, anyways, so <laughs> what kind of what kind of what we have done is it's just a numbers game. Pete, listen, I, I've talked to so many people about this and so many people tell me, oh, leads, they suck. The, uh, I, you know, I got a lead the other day. It was Bart Simpson and they wouldn't let me return it. And I wasted 15 bucks. I get it. You're going to have those. It's a numbers game at the end of the day. So if I buy yeah. 100 leads and I close 10 of them and I have a 10% close rate and the average revenue per policy is 350 bucks it, the numbers make sense yeah you know so i think it's just knowing your numbers and then giving it enough time to test it i yeah. it's almost like um it's almost like cold calling i don't think there's really any like secret sauce it's just whenever i'm trying out like a new lead vendor i generally give it six months uh right now we're we're not purchasing a, a ton we're purchasing about 10 leads a day which sounds like a lot but it's not a ton um, no, it's not a lot at all. Yeah, and we're we're closing about eight to ten percent of them, give or take. So, in the first thirty days, though. But then you have remarketing, you have all of the drip stuff. Yep. Uh, what's what's your churn? Do you have any data on churn of the people that you know yeah. opt out and DNC you? <sighs> yeah, it's not a lot. I would say it's less than ten percent. So they stay in your funnel. You close ten yeah. percent, you lose ten yep. percent. The other eighty, you drip on yep. it until they buy. Yeah, and we don't have our automation is not super fancy. It's we. I mean, we have agency Zoom set up. They get you know an auto text, uh, auto email, a few auto emails throughout the next whatever it is, ten to twelve days. We make sure we call right. It's the simplest thing. Make sure you call right away. 
make sure you call the next day if they don't answer. We actually call twice in one day if they don't answer. So it's just making sure you, you make the phone calls. And, yeah. you know, a lot of people have asked me that, like, oh, what kind of automation and uh, drips do you have set up? Most of it <laughs> Here's is the automation. The pick up the dang that's phone. That's it. Pick up and pick call up, them. Human the to human. That's it. And that's our other thing is cold calling. So purchasing leads and cold calling, that's what's worked for us. And cold calling on the commercial side, not personal. Oh, yeah. Cold calling personal. Yeah, no, that doesn't sound <laughs> is like Is there a more <laughs> miserable thing uh, in the entire insurance world than cold calling personal yeah, lines? Torture someone. Hey, good afternoon, sir. I know that you don't want to talk to me right now, but would you like a quote for your home and auto? I'm sorry. What? Who are you? Yeah. Um, no, thanks. I'm I'm John Smith at such click. Yeah. So no secret yeah, sauce. I, Just look at the numbers, test yeah. it, give it six months. Well, yeah. you said exactly the sort of thing that I expected from you, Mr. Fitzgerald, and it does not surprise me at all that it's all just a, you know, it's hard data and process. Yeah. You know, I love it when people say it, really anything. Pick a strategy. Oh, that doesn't work. I was like, okay, why? Why do you think that doesn't work? Mm -hmm. Oh, it doesn't work because you tried it one time and it didn't work for you. So your sample size isn't large enough or your process stinks. Those are one of two options. Because yeah. everything works. It's just a question of how well it works and what's the best angle to take to make it work. Now, I mean, there's what, like 20 different insurance podcasts right now? And all of them have something of value every yeah. single one of them is is delivering Absolutely. something I, I i'm not the least bit territorial i will say i'm a little bit cynical when i see someone who's like hey guys i'm launching a podcast it's like great original idea no one's done that before good job uh but then you know other than just being a little bit snarky in general because i'm annoyed by how many people <laughs> are doing it after you know three years of doing it every single person who's doing it has something of value just the question of which angle they're taking and, you know, it's the same for, for the three of us and our, our policy holders. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about team for a second because I know team is really important to both of you guys. What are you doing to find really good talent in this marketplace mm -hmm. right now? Because I feel like in the you know, almost 13 years that I've been doing this, talent has never been harder to find and, and keep because their expectations are just so much bigger than they used to be with base salary, with splits, with book equity or phantom equity, with non-monetary compensation like, you know, car allowance or, you know, car washes or gym memberships or whatever. How are you guys winning the staffing game? That's all you, Sean, Mr. Team Man over there. <laughs> Appreciate that. Um, so I actually just had a conversation with Brett Young earlier today literally about this topic. Um and the one he knows a thing or two about this. I he, asked him the same question. He sure does. Um, and one of the quotes we pulled up was, "Hire for the soul and train for the role." And it, ooh. it was kind of ooh. ooh, you like that or you don't like ooh. that? I can't tell. Is that a bad ooh. smell or a good smell? Oh, 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 All right. okay. <laughs> He didn't use that line when I had him on my show. I'm going to give him a hard time. He's for got to rotate. No, I, I, He's got to I, rotate. I, I used. I pulled the line. It was from something I read, but it was him. Oh, and I were okay. I thought it. that was. I thought that was a Brett. It thing. does sound like okay. it would come from Brett. <laughs> it, it, it sounds <laughs> like a Brett Young. It does. Thing. I'm only real. <laughs> so, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. So I think when it comes to finding talent, it's more of just keeping your your ears open. You know, when you're talking to people, finding out what makes yeah. them tick. Right. Every what we were talking about is like every position requires different qualities. Right. So. Like the sales, like what I would look for in a salesperson, I only have technically two. One is a cold caller who is transitioning into a into an agent. But so let's say two. I look for are they competitive? You know, are they resilient? And are they just a good person? Like those are if they have those three, I feel pretty confident, you know, that they can yeah. that they can weather the storm, so to speak. Um, so I kind of yeah. look at I kind of look at the qualities. I don't have a massive team, so I don't want people. I'm not an expert on this topic by any means, but. Um, those are the three things I would look out for, um, when I'm networking at big eye or I'm at any of these events, like, and I'm talking to people, that's kind of what I'm listening out for. Um, you know, you could go to the traditional route and do indeed as well. Um, but my experience is most people I've hired has come from networking. Yeah. I think the biggest takeaway we've gotten from the podcast and people we've talked to around this topic is finding the right person for the bus and then finding their seat versus hiring for the seat. And I look at, 
I, I only have a team of myself and one other, so I'm certainly no expert in this, but I also look at like the plans for growth and, and, and the conversations I've had with potential people to join T5 and all of that. And I think of like from where I came from, from the legacy family agency, it was always, we need to fill this role for this person to do these tasks. Who's going to be able to do these line of tasks versus who's a rock star that we can, who we can bring in, who's a winner that we want to be part of our team. Some of that we want on our bus. Um, so I think when looking from a, from a recruitment standpoint, it's like, Hey, are they, are they a good person? Do they like to win? Do they fit your vibe? And then you can teach them the rest. And I mean, like I said, small team over here, but that's something that I'm, I'm looking for and excited to look for as we continue to grow. Well, that Steven, what's your team look like right, right now? Just me and one other virtual assistant. Okay. Yep. So you you've got your plans in place for when you do have an in person team member, and I bet your buddy Sean there has plenty of thoughts about that. Sure does. Yeah. Yeah. I, I listen. I think what's cool, like I, I wanted to just on this topic real quick. Like I think what's cool about this too is like the impact social media has on this whole process. You know, hundred percent. And yeah, Brett and I talked about this earlier. Like social media almost acts as like a beacon that attracts the type of talent that you want to your culture. You know what I mean? It's almost yeah. like qualifying. It's almost like qualifying potential candidates for your for your agency, which is cool. And I know you get that, James, because you're super active on social. Oh, so, yeah, a little too active sometimes. <laughs> the uh, the whole <laughs> pressure to perform thing, um, you know, seeming like a bigger deal than you are, so that you attract more of the people that you're wanting to the track you know i feel like young agents really fall into that trap mm. of spending too much energy on their image on their social media reputation and not nearly enough effort on oh i don't know building a book and selling policies and serving clients and wowing channel partners um i if i were to catalog the mistakes that i've made the first five years of risk well it's how much time i spent in insurance groups talking to my peers instead of talking to policyholders and channel partners. That's probably mm. one of the biggest mistakes of mm. oversampling the importance of what my peers think. Yeah. Which is interesting because we're currently recording a podcast that's only listened to by insurance <laughs> agents, but uh, I digress. Um, yeah. One the, last thing on that, James, before we move on is I think too, I think especially in the position like that, that, that I'm in right now, just under the two year mark, I've gotten a lot of good feedback from social media standpoint of just documenting the journey yeah. and being completely transparent. And like, you know, even if it's a, if, even if it's just a, a Facebook post from my personal page, you're like, man, it was a hard day tomorrow, but we got tomorrow, you know, a hard day today, but we got tomorrow or whatever, or, yeah. you know, Hey, we got a hundred Google reviews and like documenting the, like people can appreciate that. And then they feel like they're involved in the journey of you developing the business. And then, and, and from a recruiting standpoint of clients, it makes them feel like they want to be in it, but as well as potential team members, they can see, you know, you're showing the excited culture that you're trying to build and all those things that Sean, you were talking about with Brett and all yeah. that. So I, th I think it's, I think it's good stuff. You guys are five and a half hours away from each other. How in the world did you decide to come together and do a podcast? I'll take this one. Cause I love the, I love the story. So there was a big eye event in May, um, three days after I left the family agency. Again, don't need to get into detail, but I left the family agency abruptly. I was already signed up for this event. I'm like, I'm going to the event. I know I'm staying in the industry. I know I'm starting the agency. Louis Gazatua from JAG reached out to me on LinkedIn when I posted that I left the family agency. And I did not yet say that I was starting T5. I just said, I'm no longer there. You know, thank you to everybody. And he reached out to me saying, hey, man, I left a family business as well. Like, if you ever need someone to bounce ideas off of, which first off, never I've spoke to him before, ever. And so that was super cool. He's like, here's myself. You ever want to connect? I called him right then and there. And I was like, hey, I really appreciate you reaching out. Blah, 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 blah. He goes, you know, there's this guy in New York too. That You're in New York, right? I'm like, yeah. And like I said, when, we, when I joked a little bit, everybody that's not in New York just thinks, oh, you're from New York. What part of the city are you in? Yeah. Like everyone just thinks it's all just the city. But I'm like, yeah, I'm in New York. He goes, yeah, this guy in New York named Sean, he just started an agency too. He'd be good for you to connect with. I'm like, oh, cool. I'm like, yeah, I'd love to connect with him. So I'm pulling out of my driveway to go to this event in Syracuse, which is an hour from me. And Lewis puts Sean and I in a text. Hey, guys, Sean meets Steven. Steven meets Sean. You guys should connect. You're both starting agencies. Sean, I just talked to Steven for the first time, whatever. Good luck connecting. Great. And Sean's like, hey, yeah, no problem. I'm, I'm actually at an event in Syracuse, but I'll give him a call this afternoon. I was on my way to the event. 
Oh, sweet. So almost, yeah, it, it will be almost two years to the day from today is when we first met. We've only been in person twice together yeah. since that point. Or once. No kidding. Sean, once? Uh, no. Tw- New York. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. One, uh, no, no, no. Once. Twice. Twice. The Syracuse event and the city event. Oh, the Syracuse yeah. event. That first time. And then once I went down to the city uh, for a different event. Actually, and I'm going down to see Sean in, in two weeks. So it'll be three times. But I just from that. everybody in that part of the country refers to New York City as simply the city. <laughs> and it, that is the well, most New York thing ever. Oh, and and so, so almost a year after Sean and I's friendship was the first time that I went down to see him in the city. At yeah. 29 years old, living here my entire life, it was the first time I've ever been to New York City. What? I get that response all the time. I'm so, sorry. But people, this Southern boy just thinks that all of you guys just hang out there on the weekends. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. They need to draw a line. Northern New York, Southern New York, but that is also another Which makes no sense do. at all. It'd be like me driving to Houston to hang out for the weekend. I ain't doing right. that. One, I don't like Houston. It's really humid, and they get terrible weather, and the traffic is horrible. Probably all, all the same reasons why upstate don't reasons. like the city. It's exactly, yeah. exactly the same reasons. So <laughs> That's crazy. we meet. We meet at the Syracuse event. We hit it off. We we exchange numbers. Hey, let's be in touch. And you know, James, you started a scratch agency. People are probably listen to this for, for your audience have started agencies. It's a very lonely place. It really is. And we you found need a out. Romance. We found out real quick that like we were each other's team and it was like so refreshing to have someone to pour into of like, hey, man, I'm going through this. Have you ever done? Hey, man, I got kicked on this. I, you know, hey, I had a great day. Let me share my win um, besides our spouses. Right. Yeah. And so somebody who could really get it. So about six months in the friendship, Sean calls me one day. It's like, hey, man, we got to start a podcast. <laughs> I'm like, you're crazy. I'm like, no, nope. I said we I, we're both growing agencies right now. Like you're you're nuts. Hey, all right, whatever, whatever. I think, I don't know, Sean, what, three, four months? We got to start a podcast. We got to start a podcast. Finally, I'm like, all right, let's do it. And uh, it's been incredible because, like, to your point, it's a lot of work. And you just talked about, you know, you hit that 70. I think we're at, what, 78? So we're right at that mark that you were talking about, James. Um, It starts getting really hard the closer you get to 100. Because, you're, I mean, you're just dipping deeper into the well of good ideas. And you don't want to regurgitate, you know, stuff that other people have done three or four times. But the biggest thing that, that it's done for, for me, and I'll let Sean speak to him, is just the, the community. And I tell you, the community from the standpoint of the relationship that Sean and I have built, Taylor Garcia uh, has been become a really good friend from having him on the show and, and having relatable things that are going on in each other's lives. And we've created a Scratch Agency podcast community on the Telegram. And yeah. we have about 50 plus people on that where it's just a big group chat of people that are in there saying... Hey, going across this today or anybody have this situation happen or whatever. And it's just been super cool to create that community and have that community of like-minded people to help us get through mm. this crazy thing of starting. What, what's so, Telegram? I'm not familiar. It's like a big group chat, right? Yeah, just like group me. Think of it like a Facebook group, basically. I mean, that's basically what it is. Okay. You have to explain it in small words. I'm in my 40s now, so I became <laughs> dumber overnight back in January. So I'm officially a boomer. Yeah. I have people in my in my office who are literally could be my kids. Like I'm biologically that much older than them. And so there's all kinds of stuff that happens here. I'm just like, what is that? Who is that? Where is that? It was like, wait, am, right. I, am I old? Did I become old? It was like, oh, I think I'm old. Dang it. When did I become old? So mm-hmm. enjoy all of that yeah. as long as you can. Because someday you too will wake up and be like, oh my gosh. I think I'm old. <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm getting. You there. guys are both in your what? Uh, late twenties, early thirties. I'm thirty five. Yeah, twenty nine. Okay. Yeah, Sean, I felt a little bit more kinship with you than Turnbull. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, we're, yeah. You know, I just started getting of... my clothes fitted, and then all of a sudden, my wife's like, "What are you doing? Baggy clothes are in." I'm like, "Oh, come on, I can't keep up, <laughs> bro." Everything I wear is is from a, a class of clothing <laughs> company, so it's I, I'm absolutely ruined from the the speaking circuit. I can't buy off the shelf now. So and keep wearing your fitted clothes, man. You don't, you know, your wife is going to be more stylish than you. Let's be honest. <laughs> yeah, one hundred percent. No, mine certainly is. So the the podcast became a thing based on the idea that you guys were just going to tell a story because 100%. you're going through a journey. And I love your podcast is great, not because I've been on it, but because, <laughs> that's where you're supposed to laugh. I guess I'm not very funny. Uh, the, uh, the Turnbull's face is hysterical. He's just like. <laughs> 
<laughs> For those of you that are not watching on I'm YouTube, the you faces of Stephen Turnbull, man, holy cow. Yeah, he's got good ones. But the, uh, you guys weren't starting a podcast from the position of, I know something you don't know and you should listen to me tell you. It was it started from the position of, we're going through the fire. Yeah. We are being refined. Uh, we are learning something every day and we want to share that with you. Maybe you can learn from something that we're doing and maybe not make some of the same mistakes that we've made or had some of the same hardships or challenges, you know, like as fellow blind people letting others know where the bread's at. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the vibe I get from you guys. Yeah, yeah. I heard, um, I've said this on our podcast before, but I listened to this other podcast with Ed Milet, and he talked about the journey of an entrepreneur and how important it is, like he broke it up into rooms, the 10-year room, the 20-year room, and the 30-year room in a sense of 10-year yeah. entrepreneur, 20-year entrepreneur, 30-year entrepreneur. And he said, as a newer entrepreneur, you want to get in the room with as many people as possible from the 10, 20, and 30-year um, windows. So that was kind of my thought process. As simple as it sounds, that was kind of my thought process behind the podcast. I was like, man, this is going to get us in the room with people who have owned agencies 10 years, 20 years, and 30 years. And that's mm. literally what we've done. Like most people we have on are way more experienced than Stephen and I are. Dude, you're going to make me start singing Hamilton now. I freaking love that song. <laughs> Just want to be in the room where it happened. Oh, there you go. Where it happened. <laughs> the room where it happened. Mm. No, it's, <laughs> yeah. I mean, what a great musical, right? And you guys have probably seen it on Broadway, right? It, not me. I've only been there once. You haven't been. <laughs> no, my wife. Oh, that's, that's right. Wife. Steven's already. My wife is a lot more Dude, cultured than I am. <laughs> I made fun of it. I was like, "That is the dumb." I, I'm not watching. I hate musicals. No, it's awful. And Allison, my wife, was like, "Try it out before you bash it. I think you'll like it." And like two songs in, I'm like, mm, "I love this. <laughs> Hamilton's yeah. amazing." No, and no. It, Sorry, I totally I offshoot there, but now I'm thinking about Hamilton. I think I'll watch it tonight on Disney Plus <laughs> just because it's awesome. Dude, if I lived in New York City or anywhere near it, I would go see Hamilton like once a quarter. Yeah. Because, yeah. And Steven's like, can we talk about insurance again? <laughs> I'm not having this Broadway crap. <laughs> so oh, what's, uh, what has your curiosity? I love asking this question when I don't know specifically what else to ask because I always get good responses from this. What has your curiosity right now when you think about this stuff that's going on in our industry and what are the links that you're clicking on, the topics that you're like, hmm, that's, I want to know more about that. And just chatting about with peers and mastermind groups, like what is it that you are, are focusing on right now? You go, Steven. Okay. I, I, I say for me, it's um, scalability in the business. And I say that because one of the biggest things that I've learned is coming from the legacy family agency side is how many different ways there are to skin a cat in this, in, in this insurance agency world. And I didn't know that until about two years ago. And there's no right and wrong way. And I've said that before, but when I was at an agency that was 155 years old and fifth generation, it was, this is the way we were doing it. And that don't fix it. It's not, it's not broke. Don't fix it. And then I came out to do my own thing and got to learn how to do this. Got to learn how to do this way. Meet people like Sean, meet people like yourself. And there's, Oh, we're doing it this way. There's so many different ways. And so I think for me at the point that I'm at, what gets me interested right now is learning how the people that were in my position of where I'm at in the two year mark were able to scale when they were there and what they were, what was successful for them. Was it getting that first service person? Was it immediately hiring five salespeople? Like what, you know, what worked well for other people, but then making sure that I make it my own and make it the T5 way that that makes sense for me and my agency style. So um, I guess that, that that would be my clickbait right now. Love it. Yeah, Sean? I wouldn't say mine's an emerging trend, but I am focused a lot more on leveraging social media from a recruitment standpoint and a prospecting standpoint whether that's leveraging LinkedIn to connect with more business owners or leveraging Instagram from a recruitment standpoint, that's something I'm really focused on working on and building currently. Love it. Dude, we, uh, we started a TikTok like three weeks ago and I have stated I am not nearly cool enough to be on TikTok. 
Um, but we have uh, two young ladies at my office that are just all the way into the TikTok game. They love it. They spend hours a day on it. I don't understand it because I've already admitted I'm old. I'm now 40. I don't belong on TikTok. Uh, but we started a, a TikTok and Addie has been leading it out and it's hysterical and it has almost nothing to do with insurance. It's just telling the story of all the goofy, weird stuff that happens in an office with James and seven women uh, <laughs> that are, I mean, Jan, Jennifer Wallace is our only remote team member and she's older than me by, I think, three or four years. I don't remember. But literally everybody else other than myself in this office are 20 something females uh, and there's seven of them. So it's like I am the most out of touch person in our entire <laughs> office by a, by a lot. All that to say, it's a very long winded way of saying I 100% uh, see where you're going with that social media thing because so many people that I I know in the local area, but they're not clients of ours. I've been like, oh, I love your TikToks. Your stuff is hilarious. And I'm like, really? Cool. Thanks. Thanks for the heads up. And inside, I'm thinking, you watched our TikTok, but it was about nothing it was like the seinfeld of insurance agency tiktoks it's like i we're literally talking about nothing it's just goofy stuff at the office that i th i think is funny but it has absolutely nothing to do with insurance at all right. you got to clip up those yeah. dance moves from before for tiktok oh bro i i am <laughs> i'm getting all the way into those sound things and like overlaying on whatever i'm just like this tiktok's the weirdest platform man i don't get it but I, it doesn't matter if i get it because my whole team loves it and apparently, you know, people in their 30s are, you know, on TikTok. I totally underestimated TikTok. I thought it was, you know, if you're older than 30, then you're not welcome there. But that's not it at all. Well, I mean, I think the, I think there's a ton of leverage right now. I know because I know you do a lot of commercial, James. Um, LinkedIn just seems like, I mean, even if you're not posting insurance related stuff frequently, I mean, you're staying top of mind for any business owners that are connected with you. Yep. Yeah. You know, like we just had somebody reach out like a couple of weeks ago, a large contractor. I used to insure years and years and years ago. And he just randomly messaged me on LinkedIn. And just, hey, hey, hey you're that. still doing insurance, which kind of hurt me at the same time. I was like, oh, God, I guess I got to do more <laughs> insurance content. Um, but it was also kind of cool. Like, oh, he must be following my stuff or, or seeing what I'm doing. You know, so the activity, mm. whatever activity you're doing, um, I think will help in some some way or shape or form, you know. So I promised you guys runtime of about 40 minutes, and we're, we've got three or four minutes left. Um, any, anything that we need to hear about? Any other superpowers? Any lessons learned? Any, any word for the people? Pretend you're on your podcast, hmm. except you're borrowing my audience here. Like, scratch agent guys just talking. Like, is there a bomb you've stepped on in the last couple of months? You're like, ooh, I got to let people know there's a bomb there. Don't step there. Yeah. Eliminate. I'll keep it simple. Eliminate the distractions. I read a book recently. Um, there's no plan B for your A game and it makes you list out all your distractions. Mm. And I'm just going to be honest. I'm kind of a, I guess I was being a little cocky and it's like, oh, I don't really have much distractions now. I'm, you know, I'm crushing it. I'm working hard every day. And then I wrote out, I took time and wrote out my distraction. It was like, holy crap. Why am I looking at my investment account an hour and a half every day? You know what I mean? Like little things like that. So my yeah. word of advice is because there's a lot of noise. We talked about it earlier, James. There's freaking 78 different insurance podcasts. There's a lot of noise. Eliminate some of the distractions and just focus on growing your agency. Yeah. And find what works for you. Yep. Yeah. And find what works for you within that, yeah. right? I'll say one thing. I don't I don't have any, any bombs to say, but I'll say that Sean was very humble when he was talking about the leads and different things. I think one thing that Sean does very well is from a process standpoint, it is unbelievably incredible to watch and how close we've gotten i can see it firsthand but when he has an idea to the implementation of how quick it's done and how well it's done where my mind is more of like man this is a fantastic idea and then the squirrels over here and the birds going over here sean can see a to b and get it done and so and i, and I just wanted to mention that because i think you left that out when you're cold calling process in your buying leads process the the real success comes from like we said doing it yeah. but how well you set those processes up. And that's something I'm trying to learn from Sean. Uh, Steven, I have a, a quick question here. I noticed the, the, the golden bear on your chest there. Um, how's your golf game recently? Not oh, terrible. Yeah, it's just a really nice shirt. Yeah? <laughs> how yeah. often do you get confused for Scotty Scheffler now that he has a beard <sighs> like yours? 
you know what? That is the first time, but I, I'll take that. I'll, that is the first time. Similar haircut, for, similar beard. Yeah. You know, you're, you're a tall guy like him. Good looking. Yeah, there's, there's yeah I got gotcha. you. Deadly handsome. Yeah. 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 I mean, absolutely. I, I see a strong resemblance there. Definitely not as good as Scotty Scheffler as far as the golf game. That's for sure. Especially since they started the scratch agency. So <laughs> anybody yeah. listening to this, it's like, man, I'm going to start an agency. Just be okay with not golfing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At least for the first five years. I, I hit the five-year mark on April 1. And going into this year, one of my goals was I want to play 20 rounds of golf. As last year was my first year, like saying, I want to be a golfer. I really like this mm-hmm. game. It's a lot of fun. I think I played 11 rounds in 23. And I walked in at 24 going, I'm going to play 20 rounds this year. And today, as we record, it's April 24th. And I have played two rounds this year. That's awesome. That's <laughs> <It's> awesome. Like, <laughs> shoot, oh. this is not going how I wanted it to. But our business is way more successful. Family's thriving. I see my kids way more than I did last year. And it's like, you know That's what? beautiful. Okay. Golf game is uh not as important as anything I just listed off. So, you know, we are we are blessed men living a charmed life, right, fellas? Hundred percent. Amen to that. We got the opportunity. That's what we gotta be thankful for. That's what I have to tell myself every day. We got the opportunity. Any closing thoughts from either one of you guys? Just appreciate you having us, James. Appreciate all you do for the industry with this podcast and everything and, and being a resource for us and having us on together. It was a lot of fun. It was the first time we were ever guest on I'm just glad I got to be the first one to get both of you knuckleheads yeah, yeah. at one time. That's awesome, yeah. man. Usually um, it's just usually on our show it's just me cutting Sean off all the time because my ADHD is all over the place. So for someone <laughs> to to interject that is is good. It's always fun having other podcast hosts on because I don't have to worry about carrying the show. It's it, there's plenty of plenty of talking going on. So um, the, the, the guest information form that you guys filled out, is that good for all the links and stuff you want us to put in the show notes? Yep. Yeah. Works good. Yep. Sweet. Okay. I'll make sure that that, uh, that gets in there. You can find the link to the scratch agency podcast in the show notes of this episode. Check them out after you're done listening to my show, of course. And, uh, this has been another episode of the agency freedom podcast. Thank you to our guests, Stephen Turnbull and Sean Fitzgerald from the great state of New York. That's all for today, boys and girls. Make it a great day. We'll talk to you again real soon. Y'all take care.